Hello everybody and welcome back to Dragon Age Veilguard. Crazy that I can say that still. Um, anyway, I'm gonna be probably a little distracted. My sister's at a, like a rock festival and they have fossil booths and there's like a guy who's probably selling Cretaceous fossils and like, uh, like I'm so, I kinda want some. And we've been looking up the ethicality of it and it's all stuff I kinda knew. I've been reading a lot about dinosaurs off and on for the last few years. And anyway, I'm not gonna get into it. But uh, suffice to say, I would like some potentially. Also, I just found the email Bioware sent earlier today that had a beautiful full Fenhero lithograph and I have not there's a couple that I was like oh I don't need I don't need those I do but the, we are popping off like we are eating with freaking Fenhero are like officially sanctioned I've always been a fan of Napuni if you don't know who N-I-P-U-N-I -I, yeah uh they make stunning solace art and I used to have some like, when I had a place that I could you know that I had a wall for um that wasn't my sister's place I had um a gorgeous piece from them that had Solus walking through what they envisioned, what I think she envisioned uh, Arlathan to look like. It was Solus like walking like during the height of Arlathan, like the city, right? Um, and it was like, oh my gosh, it was so beautiful and I got it and I want to buy something from them. I want to buy every single piece of Solus art they have. Honestly, and I just my impulse control is so bad. I see Solus like a buy like buy something that has Solus on it and I black out and then I'm like, oh wow, crazy. I'm missing five hundred dollars. <laughs> you know. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad with it. I'm down bad with it. Oh, I should check out this room. I totally forgot. Time for some secrets. Woohoo! Secrets! Sorry, I'm making sure everything's working. I live in constant fear. I mean, I already had one issue where I was using the wrong microphone. But, you know. Hopefully that's it. This is so beautiful. So gorgeous. A piano. This is what he had on the Inquisition walls and the rotunda that he's in. And that's the Inquisition symbol, obviously, right? And this is... Oh, that's new. This symbol shows up... This is... Oh my gosh, this mosaic... Or this fresco, sorry, it's fresco. Um, right here. Was unfinished on the walls of the rotunda in Inquisition. Uh, he's like he had started mapping it out and we just assumed that like he had, when he had left and we didn't know why at the time You know like he just disappeared um, But it was unfinished and it was this The it looked like the Inquisitor's sword and like a like a dragon or a, like some sort of mythical creature, right? But all you get is like the outline and oh my gosh Oh I, I saw that thing we can click on over there, but I'm just loving looking at all the little like the little thing, the little doodads. Oh, is this this is from Orlay. Maybe. I swear I've seen this timepiece on Orlay, which honestly Orlay's on Halam Shiral. Like or the Orlesian what is it? Halam Shiral is on the site of Halam Shiral. I'm pretty no, that's a lie. It must be, right? It must be where the old Elven city of Halam Shiral was from like the second rising of the elves. That was then put down by an exalted march. Anyway, I've seen it before. Is that cheese wheels? Oh my gosh, we found our Bioware cheese wheels. Woo! <laughs> it's not a Bioware game without a gazillion or one well-placed cheese wheel or a gazillion cheese wheels somewhere. All right, this is a real Bioware game. They haven't forgotten us. <laughs> I'm going to be mad about the world state, but at least they put cheese wheels in. <laughs> but this looks like the artifacts, like the elven artifacts that we had to activate for Solus to strengthen the veil. Those are actually Astrariums, and I don't know how I mixed it up, because while editing, I was looking at them, and I was like, those are clearly Astrariums, not the elven orb things that we were <laughs> activating, alas. But I can tell you for sure now, those are the Astrariums that we had to run around getting in Inquisition, which were one of my favorite parts of that game. We don't know if that's actually what it was doing. Hello, Durgan. This. The Dread Wolf. That must be the eyes of the Dread Wolf. Or is it something else more ominous? Oh, hey. Hey. Yeah. All right, what knowledge do you have for me on the piano forte? 
Memories of a duet. I'm gonna cry. I'm wrong, but oh my gosh, show me. Gosh dang it. Don't make me cry. Oh, charter. Uh, charter, yes, the trail went cold, but we haven't entirely lost it. So we'll have us a little farewell note, so I'm not giving up just yet. Maybe it's gullible of me, but I know the Inquisitor feels the same. Solus isn't too far gone to bring back. If he weren't, he could have just killed us when he had the chance. He didn't have to save her life when he took back the anchor. He didn't have to warn me and Harding to give up. I don't think he wants to do this, so I'm taking the chance. Yes, yes, I know. Don't put anything in writing. I don't want it coming back to haunt me. Memories of a duet. The sheet music left by this instrument appears to be for a duet. It has been annotated by an expert hand. The annotated are accompanied by clear emotional impressions, diligent practice with a ruthless eye to mistakes, the relief of private achievement away from well-meant misunderstanding and mindless worship, an unspoken joy in the center of rising perfect echoes. Finally, a beloved memory surfaces, a smiling glance meeting at a crescendo, a shared moment of understanding, seeing completely and being wholly seen. The impressions fade. I'm going to cry. I wonder if this was Solus, right? The um, learning to play the piano. Sorry, I just showed my friend the lithograph, and she's like, and I'm like, <laughs> like you know. But um, oh, what was I even saying? Gosh dang it! I do this all the time. Gosh dang it! I'm so upset. Anyway, I bet you it's a, it was something where potentially mythol it was methyl methyl on him obviously this has some correlation like casolas like talks about talks to the inquisitor at least a little bit towards the end like i understand how lonely it is to be at the top and to be almost worshipped because the inquisitor again was kind of worshipped as like the herald of andraste right so like in more ways than the inquisitor realized her and solas understood each other like solas understood her more than she thought you know what i mean um, like, it wasn't just a simple wandering hermit. Like, he understood being semi-mythical, worshipped being who was trying to save the world, you know? And having that burden. And having somebody who could share it with you. Mm. Mm. Also, like, what? He was learning the piano? What? He never did that. He never did anything musical when he was with the Inquisition that I know of. Hey, it's the Triforce. Look at that. Oh my gosh. But I wonder if Mythal was the one who could see him and knew him, you know, and helped him with the burden. Um, but, oh my gosh. <laughs> Why, why must I suffer? Neve, right, I need to go talk to Neve. The walking pace is pretty slow. It is nice that we can run though. Make, oh, really quick, just make sure nothing popped up for, yes. I love the lights idea, that's such a, such a good idea. Hey, Nev. Hi, Wisps. Hi, Wisps. Yeah, they're still here, but you're here for Leeds. You want allies to go after the gods. I've got places to look, if we can get anywhere but Arthur. Oh, them. I should have asked. Laura's working on it. What have you got? Let's start with the angles we know. The gods are corrupt magic personified. Who do we hire to fight that? Mm. First, the Antivan crows. What? I... You want to fight gods with assassins? Yeah, what? Not just any assassin. Their most feared mage killer, the demon of Virantium. Anyway, that's, I don't know how you pronounce it, Lusanus, Lucanus, Lucanus, I think maybe, um, or Luz, I don't know. Uh, anyway, he's the one I'm eyeing right now for a lover. Um, but also like, I just, like, who do you hire to kill a god? I'm like, I mean, there's not god, kill god killers aren't a dime a dozen. God killer is a really good book though. I, re I recommend it. Um, but also I could see where it's like you want a targeted you know, you can't necessarily take, like, a, 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 a an army approach, but, like, a mage killer. I mean, they aren't, they aren't gods, right? I guess we do have to think of them as mages. Try to think of them as mages, you know? And, yeah, this is interesting. Working with a feared mage killer doesn't bother you? If he doesn't have a contract out on me, it's not a problem. <laughs> it's not a problem. 
You think a train killer will like us? <laughs> What's not to like? <laughs> the demon got his nickname <laughs> taking out blood mages and Venator. Oh, okay. From everything I've learned, the reputation was Okay, earned. so he's not a big meanie. I never uncovered his real name, and there's been fewer stories the last few years. But the crows would know. I can set a meeting with their bosses. Interesting. The thing is, is right now, Antiva, where the crows are based, is having an issue with some kind of invading Kunari force, whether or not it's the entire governing body of the Kunari behind this invasion, or just some merc bands is something to be determined. And if Bio why would Bioware switch the names on Tom and Talvashoth were distinct entities? Yee! Okay. Time to make new friends. We'll see if it works. You said the crows were first. What's next? A trip home. Back to Minrathus. Capital city and heart of Tevinter. An empire of mages that knows a thing or two about corrupt magic. Mm, that's fair. Tevinter authority mm. won't help and can't be trusted. Which is why we talk to the Shadow Dragons. They're a resistance group that fights slavers, blood magic, and imperial corruption. They've got eyes and ears everywhere, including mine. If the gods enter the empire, we might get something. Besides... I owe them an update. Mm, yes, that is her faction. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. But I'm going to be sad. I know we get to see there's like one character we get to see that we've only heard about up till now. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. But like, where's Dorian? Where's Fenris? That's one of my big ones is where's Dorian and Fenris? Like, and I don't think I'm going to get to see them and I'm going to be upset about it. Are they all mages? Devinta might prize its mages, but the shadows accept anyone. We've all got a stake in the cause. I get the feeling you have a lot of dramatic stories. <laughs> One or two. So, we talk to the crows in Antiva and the shadow dragons in Mirathus. I wouldn't mind checking in on my neighborhood either. If Balar is ready for us. Yeah. Should check how things are going. <laughs> okay. The awkward, like, not quite a finger gun, you know? <laughs> See you, blood. Okay, sick. I'm excited. Also, but the thing is, too, is we're gonna go do the crows, and, like, if I don't get to see Zephyrin, mm, I'm gonna be so upset. I'm gonna be upset. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to take this game on its own merits. I'm trying to take this game on its own merits, but, like, this city, this is a series based on like, I'm not based necessarily 100%, but that had continuity and that I really liked the continuity of. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be sad. <laughs> Almost there. I just have to. Shit. Sorry. Is she uh, a mage or what? Help? No, no, I got it. Mostly. Mirrors are funny things, aren't they? Reflections. They distort reality, no matter what you try. And there's the trick. Control that distortion. The way is open to us. Oh, we're going to the crossroads? There you have it. It looks like the crossroads. What is that place? If I had to guess, it's the Fade. Another part of it, I mean. Didn't Morrigan say this Alluvian could go anywhere? Didn't think that meant elsewhere in the Fade. She called it the Veer of Us. Freedom of ways. I wonder... Well, what? If you have an idea what that place is, Bellara, share it. We don't have time to waste. Some of the older texts talk about a place in the Fade where all the Alluvians meet. Oh my gosh. A crossroads where you could travel across all of Thetis in just minutes. It's called the crossroads. Right. We saw something similar when we were chasing Solus. I wonder if it's the same. Oh. Please. It is alike. And it is not. Hello? What? Um... Either you found some way to get into the lighthouse without us seeing, or you've been here all along. Not sure which one worries me more. 
The wolf's fang. You carry it now. Oh! Old paths. A new journey. The dagger. Through there. I will wait. Why? Well, can't tell if that's a trap or not. But we're short on options. One way to find out. And it didn't feel dangerous, you know? Almost more... sad. Just because something's sad doesn't mean it isn't dangerous. Mm. I can think of an example or two that proves that. And we so still this. don't know what <laughs> Saluvian's gonna do. One of us should probably stay behind in case it closes. Good point. Just tell us when you're ready to go, Rook. And then we can figure out what's going on. I think it's funny that they've just assumed I'm going to be in charge. But, um, to be fair. Um. No, oh, wait, give it, give it to me. Um. I guess Varric has said I'm his second in command. Which is funny because you'd think it'd be harding. Uh, initial notes on the dampener's operation. Dampener creates a counter resonance to the Fey. That's why it's safe to live here. No one's been torn apart yet that I know of. But the counter resonance from the dampener is tuned to the specific part of the Fey. The more you move away from the spot, the less effective it would be. There's a theory that every mage has a unique resonance. The way they touch magic is just a little bit different, which would make sense with the um, Epineurus. Theoretically, could you tune the dampener to a person's resonance instead? Make it so they couldn't use magic. It would be hard to figure out someone's specific resonance would need examples of their magic. Need third volume. Volumes of Harris's collected essays will ask the professor if he has it. But Lara's been doing research. And we go! Time to go! Uh, this is fine. It would make sense to leave Ballara on this side anyway. Something went wrong with the Fade Portal, so. Like, at least on that side. It's interesting how we go through it like it's like a tapestry. Hello Knowledge! Again. Who are you? A caretaker. Ah. Oh. I go where I am needed, dweller. Now, I am here. And where is here? The crossroads. The crossroads. Oh, wow. It is beautiful. This is kind of looks like the area we were hopping through in, um, yep, in Trespasser DLC. There was dwarven stuff right there at the end, right? And this room, I recognize it from the library. Can you help us? I get the feeling this is no place to get lost. The Evanurus hunger for the crossroads. Their influence is spreading. It's got the six eyes of the dread wolf. Light. Death. Madness. They send their minions to claim this place. The crossroads is in a time of need, Dweller. Dweller. I cannot protect you. Dweller of what? You don't have to. If you're standing against the gods, then consider us reinforcements. Could you give me some more information? That's all I want. I just want some info. Oh, it's sick. Oh, I keep yawning. Oh, hello. Dirthamin statues. Ah! Light, roots, and magical seals. What's through there? Interesting. The blight is already here. That's upsetting. Thought the crossroads would be safe for now. Why so spooky? These are also like these weird skeleton sketch statues are surrounded by 
skeleton, like actual skeletons. Like there's not, they're like, they're like congregated here, and there's coffin. Why? This is deep. Deep roads. This looks very. I mean, this is Balefire, probably. Looks almost dwarven, though. Let me look. There's places. There's things. Oh, there's people. There's dryads. Who were trying to hide or flee when something happened. More. Well, I don't really see blight here, but it's all lit up red for some reason. <gasps> the Anderfels. Okay, so maybe the Anderfels is this way, but there's the Griffin Can't statues. This way. The gods are trying to slow us down, which means we can do some real good here. A ship. Hello. Mirrors upon mirrors. This place is amazing. June's normal alluvians function of twin lyrium fragments. One always leads to another. So has somehow talked the crossroads into making fade alluvians that override them. His own network to run our rebellion. Provided you ignore all the old stories about holding up mirrors to mirrors and getting caught in the infinite reflections. Falassin. Falassin. I'm out there. He somehow talked the crossroads. I mean, the theory is, is that Solus was a pride or knowledge, like wisdom spirit. He was either pride or, or pride or wisdom, or some combination thereof, right? Um, and was asked by Mythal. It's stated in the Trespasser DLC, I think, when you find the clues for like who the Dreadwolf is, um, that Mythal probably asked him to take form, like. A, a mortal form and like so he did so at her behest um or potentially was forced to but i think it seems more like a benign asking um but he's always been close to the spirits because he was potentially originally was one which is why he took up on cole's uh plight so much too in the previous game real quick as i mentioned at the start of the video my sister who was at the rock and uh, fossil places between festival called me and I muted myself and then I forgot to unmute myself for several minutes but it's just this like driving up essentially part and then we get to see some cool stuff there and a little fight but I'll get back on in about a minute or so the spirits here were driven out refugees now from the gods minions I have summoned the guardians of the crossroads to protect them. Beware. The guardians repel all interlopers. So we're interlopers too? Tear. That's where they're breaking through. God's in their fade tearing. Let's cut them off. I just realized I forgot to turn the um, freaking mic back on after my sister called. How long have I been <laughs> not talking? Oh, goodness. Anyway, I called the guy Caron, as you should, and I was like, holy cow. When you see the Fade Spirits, and, like, this is obvious, probably who Solus has been fighting for this whole time is to give the Fade Spirits back, like, the, the life they used to have, kind of. Um, but also, he was hoping to, um, you know, save some mortals. You know, he didn't want to kill everybody, but, uh, yeah. Um, and I'm upset that I have to fight the Guardians, because, like, he's like, the guy's like, oh yeah, I summoned them to save, to keep everybody, all the Fade Spirits safe, but they'll attack you too. Somehow the Venatori are in here, and, but I had to kill the Guardians too, and I can't throw my shield for some reason. Well, look at that. What are the Venatori doing here? Open from the other side. How inconvenient. Oh, hello. Little secrets for those of us who want to look around. 
Oh. Big secret. It's blighted, though. These blighted roots. The god's blight and blood magic has sealed the way. Only their champion may open it. Their champion? A champion? It dwells on this island. Challenge the champion and claim its essence. This path will open to you. Probably the room I was at. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, this is a different area. Oh, hello. The converged city. Yeah, I hear you, monsters of the guardians can't hold them up for long. Unknown nature. Ooh, oh for Harding. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Crafted for already my friends and the wardens. These others subtly honor the order without implying I drank dark spawn blood. That is funny. There's been some actually funny lines a few times in here too. Like not just written, but like dialogue. I have. There's been some actual funny ones in my mind. Anyway. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Red lightning is unnecessary. Yeah, I don't want to touch it. Oh, okay, so we can use it. Okay, I remember to turn the mic on this time. Turn it back on. I don't want to touch it. Alright, it's taking too long. Watch yourselves. I see here I was thinking, uh. Oh. Interesting, okay. Like lock in on this guy. I really love the look of the detonation. Oh, why am I dead? I thought I dodged everything. Rook, oh, left something behind. It is having a hard time. It is flailing. That's the essence we need. It's cold. Ugh, hope I don't have to carry it for too long. Gross, 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 gross. Okay. Yeah, okay, you've got that, but what about up here? An altar to a wolf. Bet I know who that's for. Wolves, they point in the direction of their treasure. Oh, hey, we're pulling the dagger out. And just flipping it around. Ooh, I bet you we can do this at the one in the library. The one that, because they, there's a solo statue that, ha, or a Fenrir statue that has like a, a chest carrying thing like that too. I didn't. Oh, nope. I pressed the wrong button. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh, a skill point at the Fenrir altar. Thank you. These guys sound even dumber this time around than they did in the first game or in the Inquisition. Am I gonna get notes about the the druid dryads? I'm mapping the unmappable. 
This appears to be a piece of litter. Closer inspection of realism, it is, a, it is an obsessively drawn map folded like a Ravani paper toy. Unfolding it creates a three-dimensional model of something. A scrawled note is visible. I refuse to be beaten. These are reflections of true places. They have logical form. Therefore, these streets and their origin points can be mapped as anywhere else. I have charted the shifting, intertwining dreams of a primordial sloth demon and its victims. I will not be bested by architecture. My mentor keeps whining. Some things are unknowable, Virian. You are courting madness, Virian. Well, I say to him, but a madwoman concoct an entirely new schema of wisp mapping incantations just for this. The rest is unreadable. <laughs> I think that answers its own question. Mapping the fade can lead to madness. We're trying to understand it. I like trying to po trying to force it into a semblance of understanding, you know? Okay, but now with the daggery thing, I can do it myself. So glad that this is just a skeleton key. Yeah. Thank you. What it do? What do? You know, break it or Oh my gosh, look at these guys. I was gonna say, that looks like something to look at. The Vanished City. I'm dreaming, but this time I know I am. Even if I didn't, this place would tell me I'd never dream of a place like this. Cities are full of people. An empty city is the bones of a good meal. A reminder that makes a hungry woman sad. Susan Kraviazanol. Jane in Circle, 820. So she got left. Probably, like, failed her thingamajig, you know, that they make mages do. Uh, at least in the southern kingdoms. I sense a way through, dweller. Find that which seals the path. I keep pressing Y. I mean, I could just follow the path that is allotted to me. Potentially, anyway. I don't know if this is enough to get through. As oh. the gods champion passed freely, so will you. Alright then, okay. Oh yeah, I'm level seven and I have points. I was leveling up pretty quickly, honestly. Um I think I wanted to start working my way back. Working my way down, Tim. I'm gonna have to remember to press press another button. For the explosive one? Oh no. Oh no. That's a good thing I'm more washed because apparently they like they like tossing their shield. <laughs> it's apparently like a trait. It says more washed teach their warriors that leech away the enemy's very essence, focused on weakening enemies, damage over time, and shield tosses. I'm like, oh, how convenient. Oh, okay. That's an interesting combo. Eclectic armor. Okay. I was kind of going to try to go for this, but some of these passives seem really good. Number of possible shield toss bounces. That's just me bouncing it back and forth between myself. Oh, okay. Well, dang. That's a lot of Alluvians. I... And they're all intact. I wonder where they lead. Time to find out. There are... It's hard to find intact Alluvians nowadays. At least from what I remember in Trespasser. Yay! Fine, Orlesian vessel. Well, I'm probably gonna call it here. Because, um... Ooh, the architecture is so cool. Okay, cool, cool, calm down. Like, calm down, let me explore a little. But yeah, I'm probably gonna call it here. I'm not sure exactly how long the episode's gonna be. <laughs> because I had some interruptions. But the recording is a little over an hour long. So I don't want to make my computer explode, poor thing. So, anyway, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. Soon we will look at a potential lover. Oh, how exciting. I'm also on Devrin. 
the warden. He, I was eyeing him first. And then I wasn't... I mean, at very first I was eyeing the necromancer. But the mustache is just... I don't know, the mustache might not do it for me, you know? And if he does, if his voice isn't good, then I don't know. <laughs> but, uh... So he's been lower on the totem pole now. But, uh... Then it was Devrin, but then I was like, I don't know. Like, the gameplay trailer, I was like, I don't know. Uh, and then... But Lusanis apparently has, like, maybe some sort of, like, mystical shadow, like, wings. And, like, listen... Apparently, I'm a big fan of that sort of a thing, according to my love that I have newly found with Vex, Vex, Vex from the Critical Role animation. So, I mean, wings are always nice, right? So, I'm ready. <laughs> but thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. Hey guys, quick postscript for the end of the video. I just finished reading a bunch of World of Thetis entries that I am going to be scattering throughout the videos, mostly hopefully here at the end. I don't know, I might put them at the beginning of the videos, uh, but for now I'm gonna be putting them at the end. Two or three codex entries uh, out of the like 20, 26, I think that we had left on the World of Thetis entries. Um, just because I realized I, I kind of read them a little late, like I was supposed to kind of read them in my mind, I was going to read like a couple before every episode, and I did not do that, and I was like episode 50, like that I just recorded, so, um, so in order to put these in, not all in one clump, because like, as I mentioned before, and Subby was mentioning in the comments as well, it's like, it's not really great to just like lore dump sometimes, like it can be, it can be a little much, especially like, it's nice to read them as you pick them up, because it kind of gives you clues, like hit, like hint drops about the area or whatever, but this was just, they gave us all, like, these 28 entries, right, that are from Inquisition and Origins and stuff like that. But I figured they would be good to sprinkle throughout because it helps give background for anybody who hasn't played Inquisition or any of the other games. And I figured these were kind of like the basic lore nodules that Bioware was working off of um just if, for anybody who's new like they just like here's our 28 entries that would be useful for you to know so it was a nice refresher for me and I will scatter them throughout at the end of each episode for a while for going on for a little bit now so uh yeah thank you guys for watching the video and if you enjoy these let me know and if you think they should be at the beginning of the episode let me know but yeah anyway we will hop right into the first two or three okay antiva in the rest of the civilized world it is common belief that antiva has no king i assure you gentle readers that this is untrue is this yeah it's shadow tv <laughs> The line of kings in Antiva has remained unbroken for two and a half thousand years. It is simply that nobody pays any attention to them whatsoever. And it's not just kings. It's queens. We had que I saw her codex entry the other day. Queen, Ant Queen Asha of Antiva. In truth, the nation is ruled by a collection of merchant princes. They are not princes in the literal sense, but heads of banks, trading company, and vineyards. Their power is conferred strictly by wealth. But Antiva is not primarily renowned for its peculiar form of government, nor its admittedly unparalleled wines. Antiva is known for the House of Crows. Since Antivans are well known for being good at everything but fighting, it is more than a little ironic that Antiva possess the most deadly assassins in the world. Their fame is such that Antiva keeps no standing army. No king is willing to order his troops to assault her borders, and no general is mad enough to lead such an invasion. The attack would likely succeed, but its leaders would not see the day. Arlathan, part one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so excited. Before the ages were named or numbered, our people were glorious and eternal and never changing. Like the great oak tree, they were constant in their traditions, strong in their roots, and ever reaching for the sky. They felt no need to rush when life was endless. They worshipped their gods for months at a time. Decisions, decisions came after decades of debate, and an introduction could last for years. From time to time, our ancestors would drift into centuries long slumber, but this was not death, for we know they wandered the fate in dreams. In those ages, our people called all the land Elvenon, which in the old language means place of our people, and at the center of the world stood the great city of Arlathan, a place of knowledge and debate where the best of the ancient elves would go to trade knowledge, greet old friends, and settle disputes that had gone on for millennia. But while our ancestors were caught up in the forever cycle of ages, drifting through life at what we today would consider an intolerable place, the world outside the lush forests and ancient trees was changing. The first humans arrived from Parvalan to the north. I forgot that they came from Parvalan. I mean, that's where we say the Canari came from. 
called Shemlin or Quicklings by the ancients. The humans were pitiful creatures whose lives blinked by in an instant. When they first met the elves, the humans were brash and warlike, quick to anger and quicker to fight, with no patience for the unhurried pace of elven diplomacy. But the humans brought worse things in war with them. Our ancestors proved susceptible to human diseases, and for the first time in history, elves died of natural causes. What's more, those elves who spent time bartering and negotiating with humans found themselves aging, tainted by the humans' brash and impatient lives. Many believe that the ancient gods had judged them unworthy of their long lives and cast them down among the quicklings. Our ancestors came to look upon the humans as parasites, which I understand is similar to the way humans see our people in the cities. The ancient elves immediately moved to close Elvenon off from the humans for fear that this quickening effect would crumble the civilization. From the fall of Arlathan, as told by Gishrael, keeper of the Ralafarian clan of the Dalish elves. That is from... These are... I, these are all is from Inquisition so far, I guess. This is the Dalish interpretation of, if, of, the, of the oral histories that were passed down throughout the millennia, right? And so, initially, like, in Origins and start when you first played the game, um, you and in Inquisition, when you first start playing... Um, you think that it's this is the case, right? That like something in the humans caused the elves to lose their immortal lives, like the quick lives of the humans tainted the elves um, and brought their civilization down. But as we learn in Trespasser, um, it was actually Solus himself who brought the elven kingdoms down, and I think this was just humans almost like using, like re sort of rewriting the story in a way, or like mutating it so that they looked like the conquerors when what they came in really was scavenging what was left of an empire, you know? Um, so, and they yeah, probably did have wars and stuff like that, but the Elvenon people were not in any shape to fight because they had just lost everything, you know? Um, so it was easy for the humans to come in and do that. And I don't know the exact timeline. I don't know if the, the humans did seem... I don't know if they came in like while the elven gods were still around and the elves like technically had long lives or if that's just a tale that's told to explain why elves like their lifespans are shortened now you know so again it's like the history there's truths in there right there's truths in here where like yes elven lives did become shorter you know and and everything and the elves did live really long lives you know back in the day that they were you know considered a different pace you know but like there's also it's like mm, you know the more lore you get the more you're like oh snap you know all right really quick i want to say thank you to my patrons to all my patrons including my acorn tier patrons thank you so much fane for your support i very much appreciate it and i want to give an extra special shout out to my sapling tier patrons reese galito thank you so much and sebastian james thank you so much i appreciate your guys' support uh, and I want to give an extra super special shout out to my forest tier patrons who have gone above and beyond in their support of me and the channel and who I truly, honestly cannot thank enough. So thank you, Christopher, so much for your support. And thank you so much, Nightshade, for your support. I appreciate you both very much. And thank you all again for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.